Okay, in this uh, Blender video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to model a teapot using Blender 2.59. Here we are looking at the final render result of the finished teapot which, I, which I've just made. Okay, so I'm going to just exit from this. And uh, this is the wireframe of what the finished teapot looks like. Okay, so this is the actual number of uh, polygons that I've created to uh, build this teapot. So you can see the polygon count is relatively low. Okay, so I'm going to start from the beginning and show you how to create this teapot. So let's reset the scene. And we'll start by deleting this uh, default cube by pressing X. And then we press Shift A and select Curve and Bezier Curve. Okay, take note the Bezier Curve is right now uh, flat, pointing at the uh, Z axis. Okay, it's flat along the Y and X axis. So we need to rotate this to face the front axis, which in this case is the Y axis. So we need to rotate this curve along the X axis. So with the curve being selected, right, just press R, followed by X, and then press 90 to signify you're rotating 90 degrees. And now you notice that the curve is facing the ZX plane. Okay, so now I'm going to press uh, number pad 1 to go to the front view. Okay, now we don't want to work in the perspective view, so you press number 5 for your number pad to switch to a front orthographic view. Okay, and the next thing we want to do is we want to edit this curve to show the outline of the teapot. So press tab, go into the edit mode, and then move these two vertices, okay, including the handles, all the way to the right. You want to keep one of the vertex right at the center here. So when you go to edit mode, by default all the subcomponents are selected. So press G followed by X to lock it along the X axis and then just slide it to the right. Okay. To make it even more precise, I'm going to just going to select this vertex by right mouse clicking on the center vertex here and then press Shift S and snap it to the cursor by choosing the option Selection to Cursor. Okay, so now we know that this vertex is snapped right to the center of the cursor here. Okay, so while this vertex is being selected, I want to change it into a free, free type of uh, vertex. So just press V and select Free. Okay, so I can grab this handle and I can just uh, bring this down here to flatten this. Okay, so now I'm going to select this uh, vertex. I'm going to convert it into an automatic uh, curve. Okay, so I'm just going to press V and select automatic. And uh, I want to hide these handles and uh, these arrow lines here, which are the normals. So I'm going to press N to bring out the properties windows here. And under the curve display section, I'm going to hide the handles and normals. All right. So now, uh, what you're left with is the two vertices here of the Bezier curve. So now I know that this vertex has been converted into a automatic, automatic vertex. So I'm just going to extrude and create the outline of the teapot. So I'm just going to press E to extrude. Okay, and then press E again to extrude. Okay. So now I want to keep this base here as flat as possible. So I'm going to turn back the handles on by just clicking this. Select the uh, this vertex and then convert this vertex into a free, okay, free handles so that you can grab this handle and then just flatten this one here. Okay, or you can choose to select two of these vertices, two vertices handles here, then press S along the Z axis. To scale along the Z axis and press 0. So now both of them are parallel with each other. Okay, so now I can just uh, grab this and, and give it around the edge. Okay, and then just the uh, outline as I go. Now, I do not want the teapot to be so wide, so I'm going to press A to deselect, then press B and grab all these handles and shift it closer to the left. Okay, so now I'm going to select this handle and I'm going to change it into a ve vector so that everything that I extrude out will always be straight. So I'm going to temporarily hide the handles. 
and I'm just going to press E to extrude then press X to lock it along the X axis okay, I'm going to press E again to extrude press Z to lock it on the Z axis and just going to press E again to extrude lock it along the X axis and the next one I'm just going to just press E and just follow the outline here and press E again come straight down here press E again to extrude and move along the cursor all the way to the left here okay so now we have the internal walls of the uh, teapot make sure that you're in the front orthographic view all the time and uh, and be careful not to uh, middle mouse click and drag and uh, change the view okay so now I want this this section here to be rounded so I'm gonna select this uh, vertex and I'm gonna unhide the handles and then I'm going to press V and change it into a free type of handle and I'm just gonna adjust the handles okay until it matches the outline here okay so for this vertex I'm gonna try my best to move it as close to the blue center line as possible okay so now I have the outline of the wall of the teapot I'm gonna create the cover now so I'm gonna add, go back going back to edit mode I'm gonna select uh, this one two three four four of these vertices here and then I'm gonna press shift D now be careful when you're selecting make sure you select the vertex between these two handles so now that they are selected okay press shift D to duplicate okay and when you duplicate just move them away slightly like so okay so now I'm just going to extrude and create the cover okay remember these vertices are in the vector mode so whatever I extrude out is going to form a straight line so I'm just gonna press E to extrude okay now I'm gonna hide the handles temporarily okay and then I'm gonna press G to grab it here and I'm gonna press E again to extrude another section here extrude another section here extrude another section here and then extrude another section here okay so now I'm going to convert okay I'm gonna unhide the handles again I'm going to convert this into a free so press V and change it into a free type of vertex and start to change the shape of the cross section okay I want to create this nice uh, rounded uh, handle okay so I'm going to change this one into a free free handle as well okay notice as you get uh, when you change uh, one of the vertex free as you move along progressively down okay the handles will become a free uh, moving handle as well okay so I'm going to select this uh, last vertex I'm going to extrude one straight point lock it along the x-axis and all the way to the middle uh, blue line here okay so now you can see I just press tab to go to object mode you can see that I have two lines one line representing the uh, cover for the teapot and the other line representing the wall of the teapot okay so you can continue tweaking this to get it to look right okay until you're satisfied with the shape okay so now we have the outline to actually uh, bevel using the circle bezier circle to bevel a uh, the walls of the teapot including the cover of the teapot okay so the next thing you want to do okay you can actually middle mouse click and drag now to change this into a uh, perspective view and uh, you want the cursor to be back at the origin so you press shift C okay make sure the cursor is back at the origin and then make sure in edit mode okay this is important make sure in edit mode uh, sorry not edit mode make sure in object mode and not edit mode okay make sure you're in object mode and then press shift a and create a bezier circle okay once you created a circle um, its orange color uh, shows you that it's being selected okay go to the properties tab here and then go under the the bezier object data all right and then move down to the section known as bevel object okay click on it and then select the bezier curve 
Okay, you notice straight away you have a circular pattern that appears. Okay, in my previous video tutorials, okay, um, I explained that you have to move this curve, but I realized that you can actually offset it, okay, over here. In the offset value, change it to negative 1 and press enter. Okay, straight away the bevel will jump to the location of the outline curve. Okay, so you can actually press Z to go to wireframe mode and you can see the result which is looking pretty good. So I'm going to press 1 to go to the front view. And at this stage, if you're not happy with the shape of your uh, teapot, you can still select the curve. Okay, and then you can go to edit mode and you can still change the shape. Alright, you can change the handle, you can move it around and you can actually uh, change the design of your teapot if you're not happy with it. Okay, so I just do some tweaks here to show you that um, as long as you're in the front orthographic view and your uh, curve is uh, selected, okay, the outline is selected, you can still tweak this until you get the shape you want. Okay, let's say you're happy with this now. Okay, and you want to convert this into a mesh because technically right now this is still a bezier curve and it is not a mesh yet. Okay, so um, now if you convert this object right now into a mesh, okay, let me duplicate this, shift D to duplicate and then move it out along the x-axis. If I were to convert this okay into a uh, mesh okay you need to select this and press alt c okay alt c and choose the second option mesh from the curve and you will have a fairly high resolution mesh okay which is quite difficult to, to edit okay so this is actually not what we want so i'm going to delete away this i'm going to select uh, the circular uh, object again, the Bezier circle object again, and I'm going to reduce the resolution here under the object data here and reduce it to a value of 2. And I'm going to do the same thing for the outline of the teapot. Now if you can't, if you, if you find it hard to select it, just press Z to go to wireframe mode. Okay, and press 1 to go to the front view. Okay, press A to deselect and then just right mouse click close to the edge here as, as long as you're in the front view okay you can easily select this and reduce the resolution of this curve down to 2 as well okay so you will end up with a fairly low resolution model now the next step you want to do is you want to select the circular object again and change your view to the top orthographic view by pressing number 7 on your numpad Okay, what you want to do is you want to rotate the circle curve uh, at an angle of 22.5 degrees. Okay, so press R followed by 22.5 and then press enter. Now you notice that once we reduce the resolution, we end up with a 8-sided okay, object. and uh, But its uh, ends are not aligned, or rather the flat surfaces are not aligned with the axis. So by selecting the curve and rotating it at 22.5, you get it at a much proper orientation for uh, modeling the handles and the tea spout, teapot spout later on. Okay, once that is done, okay, we can actually select the circular object and duplicate another one by pressing Shift D. And then we can move it out, move it aside. And it is the duplicate that we want to convert into a object. Uh, a polygon mesh. Okay, the reason is because we want to keep this master aside. So in case we want to create another design, we can still change the curve and get another shape out of this one. So uh, now we don't need this anymore. We can just uh, select these two curves and then move them aside. Okay, and we'll focus our attention on this duplicated mesh file now. Now if you want to bring this back to its original location, you just press Alt G and you clear the transform information. Okay, so remember this is still a Bezier curve object. It has not been converted into a polygon object yet. So to convert it into a polygon object, make sure it's selected and press Alt C and select the second option. Okay, now 
you'll notice that it has changed in the mesh. It's no longer a Bezier curve. And if I press tab, you notice that you can access the face and the edges. Right? Okay, it's a fairly low resolution model, but if I were to apply a subsurf modifier, okay, the shortcut is control three. Okay. Control uh three the, the three is from the top row numbers. Okay. I'm uh, doing this tutorial based on the full size 104 keyboard. Okay. And to change my views, I'm using the number pad. Alright. So right now I've applied the uh, subserve modifier just by pressing the shortcut control three. And but we still need to tweak this. Okay, if you look carefully at the top here, I'm gonna switch over to vertex mode by pressing control tab and selecting vertex mode you'll see that uh, the vertices on top here are still not fused together. Now, we need to clean up this a bit. Okay, so I'm going to change to wireframe mode by pressing Z. Okay, and uh, I'm going to activate this button here. Okay, right now I'm going to make sure that I can select the points okay, behind. So I need to click on this button. All right. All right. So by clicking on this button here, okay, limit selection to visible. When you uncheck this, you can actually see through the wire mesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, holding down the control and left mouse click. I'm going to draw a circle over these collections of uh, vertices, and then I'm going to press Alt M, Alt M to merge it at the center. Alt M and select merge at the center. So what's happening is that all these separate vertices are going to be merged together to form a single vertice. Alright, so I'm going to move down to the bottom here. Okay, I'm going to press Z to go to wireframe mode so that you guys can see. Now if I zoom in closely, you notice that there's actually a hole here. Okay, so I'm going to press A to deselect and then I'm going to press Alt, right mouse click, okay, to select the hole here okay the loop here okay if you are not used to pressing alt right mouse click you can always holding down the control left mouse click to draw a circle over the vertices and I also want to fuse these uh, vertices together so you just press alt M and fuse them at the center press A to deselect now let's move to the bottom of the teapot and I'm gonna show you another way now you notice here we have two sections here because there's a hollow surface in this teapot. Okay, so there are two sections here that we need to fix. Okay, I'm going to show you a very quick way to fuse the vertices together. Okay, first you need to select all the vertices here. So I'm going to press B to use the box select. Left mouse click and drag so that uh, the vertices are selected. Make sure you select the correct vertices and don't accidentally select other vertices. And I'm going to use a scale method Okay, to position the vertices as close to each other as possible. So I'm going to press scale by pressing S and then I'm going to press shift Z so that it's going to be scaling along the X and Y axis. Then I'm going to press the number 0 and press enter. So now I know that all the vertices are sitting on top of one another. But remember the vertices are all separate. Okay, I'm going to use the remove doubles function to actually remove the selected vertices. So I'm going to press B to box select and select this, vertice, this group of vertices. Okay, and then now you can click on the button here or you can just press the special key W and then select remove doubles. Now look carefully over here. It says that 16 vertices are now selected. Okay, so I'm going to press W and then I'm going to select remove doubles. Okay, now it says that 14 vertices are removed. So now, uh, the remove doubles work in such a way that uh, whatever vertices that are stacked on top of each other, they're going to be fused as one. So now, when I right mouse click here, it's showing me that I'm only selecting one vertex out of 212. Okay, so remove doubles is a good way to get rid of uh, redundant vertices. But you have to make sure that they are close to each other. Okay, so now I've uh, cleaned up my mesh. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to model out the handle and the T-spout. Okay, so I can start by 
uh, pressing 1 to go to the front view okay and I'm going to press tab to go to the uh, edit mode and I'm going to decide where I'm going to pull out the t-spout okay so uh, I'm looking at a couple of faces here okay so these faces here look good and the bottom face here look good okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to okay now I'm just going to click on this button here to hide the faces behind alright so only the visible faces are being shown so I'm going to press select this top face here okay and then I'm just going to press E to extrude but I'm going to right mouse click so that the extrusion will snap back to place and then I'm going to press S to scale it down slightly okay so now I can press 1 to go to my front view okay and uh, you can start to extrude okay extrude along here to create the handle of the teapot so there are many ways that you can do it you can just simply press E to extrude okay let me just undo this because since it's selected I want it to come out slightly a little bit like so and then I'm gonna press E to extrude okay so you can press E to extrude uh, a section here and then while it is being extruded along the front orthographic view you can right mouse click and rotate it okay you can flatten this slightly and then or you can hold down to control and left mouse click to the section where you want to extrude to the area here let's say I want to extrude it here hold down to your control key and left mouse click so that it extrudes out that direction and notice the uh, face also rotate accordingly so I'm going to hold down the control again and I'm going to click here the extrudes here and then finally I'm going to click hold down the control and click here okay so now we're going to figure a way to try to connect this face to this face or rather this face here okay now I'm just going to turn this thing temporarily on so that I can select it easily this way okay so now I'm going to select uh, this bottom face here I'm going to press E to extrude right mouse click so it snap back to place press S to scale it down slightly okay and then if I turn on to normal okay I can move this out along its normal okay so now I want to join these two together first thing I need to do is I need to delete away the face here by pressing X to delete away the face and I'm going to select this face here now if you can't select it this way make sure this button is on okay the limit selection to visible or rather turn it off so that you can see through the mesh okay I'm gonna delete away this face as well press X to delete away the face okay so now you have a hole so what we're gonna do is that we're going to patch this hole here so first I'm gonna click on edge go to edge mode select these two edges here and you can press F so it links together now select the bottom faces here what I'm doing like here is I'm just simply clicking middle mouse clicking and dragging so that I'm tumbling around so holding down the shift and select the posing edge and press F so now they are patched together now select the top and bottom face here and press F to patch it together and finally patch this open end here together okay so now I've done my teapot handle okay so now let's uh, create the spout so let's go back to edit mode again and let's take a look at uh, where we can pull out a spout and we got a nice face here that we can pull out a spout so I'm gonna go to uh, control tab and go to face selection mode and select this face and press E to extrude and I'm gonna right mouse click so that the extruded face snap back and then I'm just gonna press S to scale it down slightly okay and then I'm gonna just gonna press E to extrude another face okay and I'm gonna press 1 to go to the front view again okay and okay I realize the uh, inner face that I extruded here I should have pulled it out a bit so let me go back to uh, edge mode holding down the alt key right mouse click and select the edge loop here and since I'm now aligned at the normal I can just pull out the arrow out slightly because I would just want to have this nice gentle curve here all right a gradual curve to fall on the teapot I'm gonna press one again go to the front view all right and I'm gonna switch back to the face mode I'm gonna select this face and then I'm just gonna hold down the control and left mouse click to position the uh, spout 
and then I'm going to just press R to rotate until it is completely flat like that then I'm just going to press S to scale it down okay so the next thing uh, I want to do is I want to press E to extrude again and I'm going to right mouse click so that the extruded face will uh, snap back Okay, I'm going to press 1 number pad to go back to the front view I'm going to press Z to turn on wireframe mode and then I'm going to press uh, S to scale it down slightly okay let me press 1 again to go to the front view I'm going to press E to extrude one section inwards press G to grab and move it inwards like so I'm going to press rotate Okay, you can scale this up slightly if you want and you can even delete away the face because we don't really need that face here but uh, if you go to shaded mode now you can see the teapot with the spout is now created okay now if you feel that your teapot the spout is not round enough you can tweak the vertices by going to edit mode okay so I'm going to uh, turn on vertex mode and I'm going to turn uh, it's going to move the vertice along the normal so make sure you select the two vertices here and then I'm just going to pull this up slightly and I'm going to do the same thing for these group of vertices okay and then I'm going to select these vertices and then just pull it back a little bit to give it a rounder shape Okay, perhaps these two vertices just pull it out up slightly. Okay, so now I got my T spout. Okay, so you can spend more time to tweak this. For example, let's say I want to pull this thing down a little bit. Uh, make sure you turn the uh, limit selection to visible off. Okay, let's go to wireframe mode. And I'm going to press A to deselect, and I'm just going to hold down the control left mouse click and drag to select the bunch of vertices here okay I'm going to switch the orientation of the gizmo to uh, global or rather the manipulator so just pull this thing down okay I realized that oh, okay the other both sides are now selected so that's good okay so just gonna pull this thing down slightly press A to deselect press B and then left mouse click to border select and just tweak this until you're happy with this okay so now I'm going back to solid view and I'm just inspecting the design okay so I th I'm thinking I'm quite happy with this so now you notice that the teapot cover is part of the teapot now how do we get it to be separate select one of the vertices or face or edge then press L okay sometimes you might need to press a couple of times and whatever that is linked okay will be automatically selected then press p to separate the teapot cover okay now i'm going to press tab to go back to go to object mode so now you can separate uh, select these separately select the teapot cover and you notice that the center is following its original center when it's linked to the teapot you can actually click on or, or click on origin and then change it to origin to geometry so you notice that the origin now jumps to the calculator center of the cover so now if you want the cover to follow where the teapot goes you can always select the cover holding down the shift select the uh, teapot then press ctrl p and parent it so now whenever wherever i move the teapot the cover will follow but the cover itself is a separate object okay so basically that's how you create your teapot now I want to make the teapot look nice so I'm going to import a porcelain material now I I went to this website okay the uh, okay this website the open material repository okay and uh, you can just uh, Google it and you search for Blender Material Repository and you can look for all sorts of materials. So in this website, I found this uh, porcelain material which I've downloaded and I find that it looks good on the teapot. 
So here's how you add the uh, porcelain material to this teapot. So go to File, Append, navigate to the folder containing the uh, porcelain material. Okay, and then just click on that file. Then go to the material folder and double click on the porcelain material and this material should appear in your material tab here and click on the material browser and there you see it porcelain glazed so you can click on it and because my teapot was selected just now when I selected the material the material is automatically assigned so I want to assign the same material to the cover as well so I'm going to right mouse click and select the cover click on the browser and then select porcelain glazed Okay, I'm going to press 0 to go to the camera view and I'm going to press F12 to do a test render. Okay, sometimes you might see some errors. Okay, so in this case, it appears that my teapot cover has a normal error. The normals are pointing the wrong way or the other direction. So I'm going to press Escape. I'm going to select the uh, teapot cover. Press Tab to go to Edit Mode. Okay, now all the elements are selected all the faces are selected then you press the command control N okay to uh, normalize or uh, force the normals to point the same direction okay so I'm going to press F12 again to do a test render and now the cover renders properly okay so I'm going to do the same thing for the body because I see a dark patch here so I'm going to press escape I'm going to press tab to exit select the teapot, press tab, press A to select all the elements, then press Control N, then press tab again. Okay, so in order to, to uh, make it look nice appearing in the render, we need to create a few lights, a few more lights. So uh, this default lamp, there's only one of it here. So I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate another one. Okay, and I'm going to Shift D to duplicate another lamp here. Okay, so you have uh, three lights lighting the lamp nicely. And uh, with the cursor in the center, okay, if your cursor is not at the global center, press Shift C. Then press Shift A to create a plane. Alright, press Tab to go to edit mode. Then press S to scale it up. Then press Tab, okay, to come back again to object mode. Alright, I'm going to apply a uh, generic material just give it a nice color maybe a okay so of a cyan color then press 0 okay move your cursor back to the viewport press 0 to go to the camera view and I'm gonna press F12 to render again so now you notice with the three lights and with the floor it will receive the shadows from the lights and uh, yeah, it's starting to look pretty good. Okay, so uh, you can align your teapot to uh, make sh to to the I mean the best view to the camera, or you can just select the teapot and then just revolve around it to an uh, angle that you like. Then press Control Alt Zero. Okay, so right now the camera is pointing at the teapot, but it appears that the camera has flown into the teapot. So I'm going to right mouse click and select the camera here by selecting the edge. Then press G followed by Z, Z twice and then move the mouse back. Okay, so I'm moving the camera in its local Z axis. So it's actually dolling away from the, uh, from, from the front. So then I'm going to press G so I can pan it here. All right. Now, we don't need this anymore so we can hide them in a separate layer. So I'm going to select it press M to bring up the move to layer function I'm going to move to this layer select the circular object press M and then move to this layer alright so now I'm going to press F12 to render again okay so you have the nice porcelain material now applied to the teapot Okay, so basically this is how you model and apply a material to the teapot. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this video tutorial. Okay, and uh, this is essentially an update to my older 2.49 version video. Okay. I hope